This is it. We're already at peace um, in the Paris Peace Conference. So today we're going to be wrapping up uh, World War I. We're going to talk about the different ideas of how to create peace. Uh, the, the, the meeting that they actually have at Versailles, so in France. Um, the, the issues that they deal with outside of just Europe. Remember, this is a world war, so there's issues just uh, outside of Europe as well. And then maybe looking ahead as well. What issues will people face in the future? So it's going to be um, mostly a, a lecture today, um, but there's going to be an assignment towards the end. I mentioned in my intro video that I want you to think about those main causes of the war before that we mentioned at the beginning of this unit. And think about like now that we're at the end of this unit, what have they done at the end of the war to address each of those separate things? There's going to be an assignment in Schoology for you to do, uh, and you'll have uh, the deadlines within there. I'm still trying to aim for a formative quiz on March 24th. Uh, it, it's going to be a short quiz. Uh, I still do want to have um, a, a group assignment, an assignment where we hear from uh, people from different perspectives, like what did your country do during this time period, that, that assignment that I assigned last week. Uh, I'm still working through the, the kinks on that one, but uh, hopefully I'll get that to you tomorrow. So at the end of the, the war, Germany does try to, to make one more big offensive push into into France, uh, but but the Americans had joined. So at this point, we you, they get some fresh troops, um, some troops from the United States had joined in, and that really does turn the tide. Um, the British, the French, and the Americans start winning again, and up to that point, it 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 still hung in the balance. It still could have gone either way. So the Americans do do help. There are also some issues at back home. There are mutinies uh, at home. Uh, there's some socialist groups as well forming back home. So things are not going well. Add to that, Austria-Hungary has surrendered at this point, uh, or they're starting to fade away. So things are not going well. Wilhelm is still trying to push on <clears throat> and still trying to negotiate. Um, but people in, in the German homeland are fed up. They want this peace. They want this war to end. And so um, they will end up forcing, or Wilhelm will end up abdicating or giving up his power. And they set up a new government. So the, the government's called the Weimar Republic. So that's a combination of moderates and liberals together. Um, they are... Again, uh, they're trying to just end this war. They're trying to move things forward. Um, yeah, they're, they're worried that the Russian Revolution will leak into Germany because uh, that's a, a real fear of the SDP. Remember, the Socialist Democratic Party um, is not as socialist as people would think. They, they wanted reforms. They wanted things to change. But they didn't necessarily want a revolution like they're seeing in Russia. Okay, so there was really a push to, to get things settled before that ha uh, happened. There is a group, though, of radical communists within Germany who do try to lead a, an uprising. And the Weimar Republic brings together some World War I veterans called the Free Corps to put down that revolt. Also, at the same time, um, there's the collapse of the Austria-Hungary uh, territories. So... You end up with a separate Austria, separate Hungary, a, a country called Czechoslovakia, Romania, Yugoslavia, which is really Serbia plus all sorts of other uh, people. So uh, that's that'll cause issues going forward, and, and we'll talk more about that uh, in World War II and then beyond that. So at the Paris Peace Conference, there are a couple of different ideas of how to address the peace Woodrow Wilson is the president of the United States, and his plan is called the 14 points, uh, or 14 points of peace. He tries to address some of the issues that came before the war. So he wants open diplomacy. He wants people to negotiate openly, to talk to each other, to restore some of the, the balance uh, that existed 
uh, well before when you think about like Bismarck and the, the concert of Europe and, and some of the things that Biz, um, I'm sorry, that Metternich was trying to do. And then same thing with, with uh, Bismarck. He's, he's trying to make sure that people are talking openly about issues that they have with each other. He's also trying to get people to reduce their arms. Uh, the militarism, the military buildup certainly played a role in, in the issues that uh, they dealt with in World War I. Free trade on the seas was another issue that came up, and it's part of the reason why the United States ended up getting involved in World War I. So he's trying to fix some of those big issues. The one uh, highlight from the 14 points, the one that stands out, is the League of Nations. He wanted to establish an international peacekeeping body made up of the member states. So just like the United Nations today, this is like the, um, an earlier iteration of that. In addition, he wanted self-determination. He wanted people to be able to choose their own democratic government. Now, this sounds great from an American standpoint, but from a European standpoint, they feel like they fought this war and they want payback. So as much as Woodrow Wilson is going to push this agenda of the 14 points, the leaders from Britain and France realize how much of this war affected them and their people. And they're not going to want to just allow a peaceful resolution. They want to find somebody to punish. So um, they looked at his four po 14 points of peace and realized that Germany was getting off the hook. So that's not going to work. <clears throat> and this is why. These, some of these numbers are pretty extraordinary. Uh, the amount of people who are affected by this war, uh, sometimes physically, mentally, uh, the death of, of many young men. And then don't, don't forget that the civilian population was also affected by these things. So in contrast, the United States really didn't have to, to see as much of an impact on themselves because it was fought across the Atlantic Ocean. So there's um, another plan called the Treaty of Versailles. And part of it was the War Guilt Clause. And uh, Germany pretty much entirely is going to be blamed for the war. But if you think back, is that really fair? Where did this war actually start? And if you remember back, it was actually Gavrilo Princip. Uh, a Serbian, Serbian nationalist who lived in Bosnia who started this along with Austria-Hungary, right? So that's a really confusing end to the war because the Germans are going to be the ones who are going to end up paying for a lot of this. Um, but to be fair, there's a reason why Austria-Hungary can't pay for it. It doesn't exist anymore. And same with the Ottoman Empire. It doesn't exist at the end of the war. So if you're looking for somebody to pay, the, the, the only one left is Germany. Uh, there's another thing to consider. The history that came before it. Remember that the Franco-Prussian War had happened not too long ago. Uh, Germany was becoming a bigger power. They were united leading up to this. So if you are somebody who's next to Germany, you don't like seeing a strong Germany. And so that's, that certainly played a role in what's going to go on. So you can see that in the next one, Alsace and Lorraine. Remember, Germany took that from France after the Franco-Prussian War. So in order to protect themselves from Germany, the French want to protect the Rhineland, which is uh, a region uh, right between uh, most of Germany and France. <clears throat> So how are they going to do that? The French want to be able to uh, have a military occupation of that territory. In addition, they want to punish Germany by taking away their colonies. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to end up dividing up a lot of these, these colonies amongst themselves um, to punish the Germans. Also, you can see that Poland is going to be a new state. Now, the Russians really did want that to happen as a protection, a buffer between them and the Germans. So that's actually good news when it comes to the Russians. They're, 
they're okay with that, at least up till now. Now, if you look at the right-hand side, that's uh, two very famous things that are going to happen at uh, Versailles. One is this peace conference, and one is um, Bismarck uh, and the, the unification of Germany. So two really important uh, images um, from, from Versailles. This gives you a better look at what's happened to Europe. So the northeastern part of France, right where it says Saar, S-A-A-R, is territory that, that France does get from Germany. So that's Alsace and Lorraine. You can see Czechoslovakia is now a country. Austria and Hungary are separate. And there's a huge, huge country now called Yugoslavia that did not exist before. So a lot of different things going on within Europe geographically. So back home within Germany, the German people are very divided. There's, there's that main group in the middle uh, that, that had supported the Weimar Republic. Uh, but then there's, there's people on the other extremes. There's the right wings uh, in Germany saying that um, the liberals have, have stabbed us in the back, uh, who believe in nationalism. And on the other hand, you do have some communists, some radical communists who want to overthrow this government and change things. Also, if you think about the United States and their role, they were supposed to be part of this League of Nations, but Woodrow Wilson did not play nice. He, did, he upset uh, people in the Senate back home. And so the United States does not actually join the League of Nations. We, our president had pushed hard to get the League of Nations added, and we end up not joining. So that, that, that means that the League of Nations really does not have a lot of, of big power going forward. Now, the punishment of Germany is also going to create uh, an issue going forward now. They're going to have to pay billions of dollars in reparations to pay for uh, what happened in the fighting in the war. And that will allow, or uh, I'm sorry, that will devastate the economy. And eventually we know where that's going to lead. Uh, and you can see that on this image. And there's going to be hyperinflation. The money was going to eventually become worthless. Okay. If you get a chance, go ahead and look up this uh, film just uh, to quickly... Uh, figure out what happened to Germany. They just recently, within the last decade, finished paying the World War I debt. So it, you think it's a long time ago, but it, it still leaked into today. <clears throat> Remember, this is a world war. So besides Europe, there are other places that are affected by this war. Now, the Middle East um, is one of those regions. The British and French had supported... Arabs in their revolts against the Ottoman Empire, promising that they would have their independence, that they'd be able to set up their own kingdoms. The sykes picot Agreement is an agreement between the French and British diplomats to secretly divide Palestine. So um, the Europeans are certainly making their own agreements about what they think should happen to the Middle East, uh, and that will end up creating some awkward situations after World War I. Now, one of those is uh, the Balfour Declaration. So there's a, a British diplomat who, who declares support for a Jewish homeland. So that's, that's going to dominate British policy going forward, the, the idea that the British want to set up a Jewish homeland within the Middle East. After the war is over and the Ottoman Empire is breaking up, these Arabs and uh, different uh, uh, groups within the Middle East are hoping that they they get their independence, they get to create their own countries, but the Europeans don't let that happen. They they call it the mandate system, where <clears throat> they say that they're going to be tutors for these different territories, teaching them how to run their own countries. If you can obviously see how demeaning that is that. You need a European person to teach you how to run your own country. Uh, the Syrians tried to 
uh, declare their independence and the Europeans come in and crush that independence. So the, you can see how the, the Middle East was promised certain things. They even helped um, fight against the Ottoman Empire and then the, uh, the Europeans really didn't fulfill their agreement. So this is what it's going to look like. You can see how the British have control over a certain uh, part of the land, either directly or indirectly. The French also have control. And then there's a couple of areas where even the Russians have control over these areas. So again, these are broken promises that if you even listen to politics today and the relationship between the West uh, and the Middle East, some of these issues still come up to this day. So how well did this peace settlement address the cause of the war? Uh, there's a variety of ideas of how to address uh, the causes of the war. Were they successful? And then my second question to you is, what new issues arise as a result of the war? I think we just talked about some of them, but what are some issues that are going to be going forward uh, as a result of how they try to finish up this war? Okay, go ahead and go to Schoology for the assignment, and uh, I'll see you next time.